Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dequat Traditions, where good friends become family, and family is everything. I'm sure that it hasn't kicked in on YouTube yet, so I will talk to myself until you guys come in. Thank you, Rachel and Bias, for coming in early. I know that it's a work day for no most normal adults under the age of 74. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, I'm actually wearing my real reading glasses. Thank you for coming. Hello, Lashes Journey. Thank you for coming and welcome aboard the Gquat Family Reunion Buzz. I saw you working out this morning, Lashes, and the kids. The kids are so cute running along with them. Uh, speaking of kids, I have a three-year-old great, great, great grandson who is starting a school and catching the bus. And he's so cute because the little Shih Tzu follows him out the door out of the house and waits on the curb politely while he gets on the bus. Hello, Maria Graham. Thank you for coming, sis, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Cheryl Faulkner, Mike's Chaotic Gardening. It's really jumping. You guys are jumping in here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I actually can see better today. I don't like these glasses. These are my real prescription glasses. I've been wearing uh, dollar store, drug store, Costco glasses because they're not so big. They don't make me look so blind. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up button, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have been gardening. You know, all the things we do, all the channels we follow. Hello, Sissy Joanne Stevens. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and welcome aboard everybody to the Gquat family reunion bus, Yankee sister, hola, hola. Oh, thank you, Mike, Mike, Mike. You know, I'm working with this new hairstyle and it's getting, I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. It's like coiling up and doing something. There's supposed to be some kind of locks, I think, but they're not locked yet. My neighbor who has a style called Sister Locks, I go up there and I touch her hair every week. She says, "You're not, you're not waiting. You're not waiting for it to do what it, what let it do what it do." Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hello, Tracy. Passionately intrigued arts. I've been watching you and your little ones cooking. My kids, grandkids, and even the baby. My great great grandson. They like being in the kitchen. They like cooking. And you know, if you start them off in the garden or growing something, and even if it's only one little seed and they learn to taste it, they learn to love veggies. My great grandkids are in their teens now, and it's amazing their palate when it comes to eating. I remember when they came to North Carolina and I had a big garden and it was fenced in, had a couple chicken coops, raised beds, a bunch of, of other things. They were wooden beds, not the big tall ones like you guys have now. But uh, the kids would go along and they would taste the different herbs. And I remember one time Sydney was going along the row and she was tasting it and they just grabbed the cherry tomatoes and eat them like candy. And she tasted German thyme, and she first she had lemon thyme. She liked it. Then she said, Nana, what's that little funky tasting one? I don't like that one. That reminds me of Mike and Nikki, the everyday life of an ocd chick that don't like okra. I've actually never tasted raw okra. I had three or four different types on the homestead. I had the red the Israeli, the African, and something else, something else. And I saved my own seeds. Did I say hello, G-Mama Grows? If not, I apologize. Chalk it up. 
to my sight and not my heart. I'm actually taking a medication now that causes blurred vision. But, you know, you trade one thing for another, and I haven't found anything that stops the neuropathy, the pain in my legs. So I'm th taking something now for that. I do like okra, Yankee sister. I just don't like it when it's when it's when it's slimy. And I like I said I've never had it raw, but I'll tell you what I do and I learned this from my daughter who's an excellent cook. She's an adult, obviously a grandmother, and I put my okra in at the end when I'm cooking something so that it doesn't cook all the um, middle parts out. I never ate it raw either, Cheryl Faulkner. It never occurred to me. Everyone said raw okra was so good it's slimy. I'll take your word for it. I will take your word for it. Because Auntie Ellen ain't going to try it. Ain't going to try it. Not, not, not. I've tried a lot of things, but that's not one of them. So, gardening. I will wait until a few more people come in. I'm so excited to show you guys something. I have been gardening over 70 years. Hey, Barb Brownlee, with your five machines. Thank sewing machines, that is. Thank you for coming. And welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been gardening 70, over 70 years. I will be 75, as I always tell you guys, in November in a couple of months. And by the way, I'll be going live from Arizona with Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe. So I will have somebody live in the chat and possibly a, two or more cameras so we can show you some of the things we do when we're out there or when the family is together. But I have been I have been growing over 70 years. I never would have tried some of the things I have now, but for the fact, hello, the jewelry spot, thank you for coming. The fact that gardeners share, we send things to each other, unannounced, you know, not looking for anything in return. I am the care Tammy SVPR. Oh, oh boy. Sorry, I have my I have my silent mode on, and I don't know why my phone is ringing. So annoying. So annoying. But um, NT Way, moving right along. Hello, the jewelry spot. I've been looking at your channel because I need to get my beads out and do something and make some of the earrings like you're making so that you can see it under, under, under this new hairstyle which will be a while before I can do anything with it and get it out of the way. So I need some bigger, bigger earrings. I bought some earrings, uh, some hoops, but they were so big. They looked, they look ridiculous on me. They were not a Nana style, an auntie style. They were, hey, Good Eats Homestead. Thank you for coming, if I didn't say that already. So my great granddaughter one of them just had a birthday her 20th birthday and i will give those to to her okay so how many of you are eating thank you marie graham you said i look beautiful today thank you i actually got some rest and prepared for today didn't run around did some diy on what one of my machines, Yankee sister said, my hair is popping, sis. You need to come over here and see it up close and bring your machine and bring your machine. You should be all harvested now. I know the kids are in school and I have been in the garden. I didn't have a great garden this year. I started early last December doing a couple of grow offs. And I grew through the winter. I grew inside. I went outside. Uh, I got kind of burned out in the summer. And here in Connecticut 6B, it took a long time to get warm. It took forever to get warm. Then we had a drought. And 
it rained up where Yankee Sister is in Zone, Connecticut 6A, but not down here. Hello, K. Renee. You're working but listening in. I appreciate that, and thank you. But I want to show you the big, big, big thing. And for those of you who are new, well, first of all, I want to thank the moderators because I wouldn't have a channel without them. The chat moves so fast, I miss most of it. It's just difficult for me to see everything. The moderators, I've had them like text me after the live goes off and say how many people came, questions that I might have missed and didn't address. So I really appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the people in the bushes because it contributes to my watch time. I can, I appreciate the subscribers to the channel because without them, I never would have gone live because that's how I got to a thousand subscribers happily when we needed them. I appreciate the members who have joined the friends and family membership. If you guys haven't joined it, you can go to the channel and look at the live and uh, I mean, go to live and then past that, there's some kind of a thingy that you hit to join. It's only a dollar 99 to start. And that will help me with, you know, the actual production of the channel, things that I mail out, uh, you know, little, I will be mailing more seeds. I think uh, Maria Graham grew some, some types of squash, uh, butternut, no, acorn squash from seeds that I collected myself here. Uh, if you'd like to email me about anything, about a topic you'd like me to discuss, the email address is ellenpanky at gmail.com. If you'd like to contribute a one-time something to the channel, it's ellenpanky, I mean dollar sign, ellenpanky13 for Cash App. So let me look at the comments and see what I missed. I don't think I did. Oh, gee, Mama Gross, thank you for sharing how to how to join the membership. Yankee Sister still has hot peppers and tomatoes coming. She can stew tomatoes just now. So when the kids go to dance class, I will be expecting a donation, a donation. Oh, before I show you what's in my hand that I'm so excited about, Yankee Sister bought an antique machine and Lorraine T. I'm mentioning them because they're both from Connecticut, that she bought two antique machines. And one of them is the... She bought the one that Yankee Sister has, the Spartan, and she just bought a featherweight and for an amazing, an amazing price for, for like $60. And then she had it shipped. You can't beat those. G Mom is the best mod in the business. She rocks. You are so good. I need to have her, have her uh, teach me some of the things that she does so that I can do them. Yankee Sister said they will be starting dance soon. Da, 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 da. For the big reveal, what I've grown after 75 years is my first ever patty pan squash. My sister Joanne asked about it because I don't think she's had it, but the skin is actually tender. You see where I just nicked it? Like right here. I didn't want to nick it a lot because I'm going to cook it, not today. Mike is jealous. Well, if it has seeds in it, I'll share. I'll share with you, Mike. And, oh, you're jealous? I'll tell you what, don't be jealous. Barb Brownlee says it took time to warm up there dry and Canadian smoke heavy in the morning. Tomatoes are growing better now with night temps at 41. Mike, you need to share with us how you do your 3D paper crafts so that we don't have to be jealous, but 
Yeah, I just saw that little nick I made. So you can cut this and cook it just like any other any other squash. And thank you, the Bulls Garden sent these to me, unbeknownst to me, unrequested. And that's the thing about gardeners, sharing seeds, doing things. Mike's Chaotic Gardening has sent an amazing amount of seeds to me. I love you. Love you, nephew. That's amazing. Be sure to bring some seeds when I come to Arizona. I'm going to cook it before then and dry them out. So I'm sure my the, the airline will be sick of me and Mr. Hershey. Barb Brownlee says, congrats on the patty pan squash. This was a surprise because the groundhogs, the chipmunks, and squirrels won't let me be great. They're eating the... They're eating the flowers off of everything out there. So I took a break from last weekend, and I didn't look under the bottom. I moved the big leaves, and ta-da! It looks delicious, Penny. It is so tender. Gee, Mama says so she ate hers raw. I'm going to taste a piece. I'll try, to do, I'll try to do a video. A video. But it feels so, so, so... It's like so soft. It's like a baby's skin, a baby's behind. Hey, Rudy Erajita with autism. I've been watching your videos that you've been sharing. I saw somebody breaking a plate on a recent one. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So the garden, we're talking about gardening, quilting. For those of you who are new or listening in, Jaquat Traditions stands for Garden, Quilt, and Art Traditions. And let me see if I can get this banner off. Banner. Okay, there it goes. It stands for Garden, Quilt, and Art Traditions. And we garden. We cook from scratch. We do DIY. We do traditional handcrafts and fine arts. We do a little bit of everything because there are six living generations and everybody's interested in a lot of things. Mike's Chaotic Gardening said he got 200 Tigger Melons. There's a moth in here. I don't know how it got in here. There are some in the hallway, and I think when I opened the door, they came in. Matthew, thank you for coming. Matthew Whittington, quilts today. Yes, I have, I don't know if you can see it, a art quilt that I'm working on over here. I finished what I was doing last week. But speaking of quilting, I have a fabric postcard here that I received in the mail. And it was from one of my subscribers, Auntie Bev. And this is so fascinating. For those of you who say you don't have a sewing machine, this is totally, totally handmade. The back of it says, you're the best, Auntie Ellen. She signed it, Bev Jones. But the amazing thing about it, you see the bottom? It's actually postmarked. She didn't put it in a plastic bag. And it was postmarked the 17th of August at what p.m.? from Jacksonville, Florida. That's amazing. And she put the three little hearts on the back because that's my signature, you guys. When you see me in chats and whatnot, and I put the three purple hearts, I've been doing that since I came on YouTube and I was actually legally blind then. And I could find it uh, where I was writing or if I push enter before I was finished. But look at this card. The actual flower, I'm trying to get it close enough for the camera to see. Do you see it's fabric and it's hand sewn on a piece of burlap? And it's almost like origami. And she hand sewed the stem on here. She painted the days, they look like Shasta daisies and flowers on it. And when I was in the post office, I thought that she had zigzagged around the edge. I don't know what type of stabilizer she used, but if you look really closely, 
you can see the hand stitching. I don't know how she got the stitching through there by hand. This is amazing. Honeydew, uh, that's my mother's favorite, favorite fruit, uh, cantaloupe. She likes all fruits, strawberries, but she really likes cantaloupe. And then Auntie Bev put this pretty purple butterfly, which is my favorite little one. I actually have a little purple butterfly tattoo on the back of my shoulder that I got when I was 50 being grown. And that was my adult thing to do. So do a taste test, Yankee sister. I don't know what you're tasting. I think it'll be not honeydew, something daring like like the, uh, the um, okra or something. Okay, so those of you who are talking about quilting in different places, I made a note to tell you it was Rachel on Unbiased LLC. I know that she's she will be listening in or watching later on. Hello, Marie Scrappy Creations, dropping in to say hello. I appreciate you. Mike, you're talking about Shalom, Virtuous Gardening. I finally caught your live. I saw you and your baby bump and everything. I've been watching. And you guys, with all the shorts, all the everything, I click on them. I put the thumbs up. I try to get back to, I try to get back to the ones I didn't. I just try to do the best that I can. You keep a honeydew and a honeydew list. I do too. You love the use of the burlap in the paint. This is amazing. Maybe Auntie Bev, because she goes live, maybe she will show us what she has in here for a stabilizer. It's really, really hard. It's really hard, like a piece of cardboard, which is why I'm wondering how she got the needle through it. And I don't know if you can see, it's sparkly some sparkly stuff on there. Can you see that? It's okay if you guys see my my um, P.O. box. And a funny thing, I get some correspondence, some things, and some of them don't even have my whole name, Auntie Ellen Panky. It just says Auntie Ellen. But that post office, I used to have a house on that street years ago. 25 years ago and one of the supervisors there saw it and she remembered me and she says oh i'm funny auntie bev says she's here darth x is here and thank you everyone for coming aboard the g quat family reunion bus where good friends become family and family is everything uh matthew who came before oh she used a brown lightweight cardstock. Okay. Some people use cardstock on the outside. Maybe Auntie Bev will do a live and show us how she did this beautiful card and the flower, which I said is like origami. You can see where she stitched it and it's folded over. Just amazing, amazing art. And you know what? This is what you call functional art. Anything like a quilt, some of them are folk art. This is a fabric postcard because it's made with the paper, the fabric, and all this. This is a real piece of art. Hello, Urban Garden Chronicles. She's listening. I know it's a work day for everybody. And thank you for coming. Those of you who wanted to see the quilt, we'll get to that in just a minute. But I do have a question for you. Uh, tomorrow's my mother's birthday, and like somehow September 1st seems to feel like the end of summer. And it's also Labor Day weekend starting. How many of you grew up, how many of you... Uh, say it's okay to wear white after Labor Day. When I grew up, there was a thing like you didn't wear white in the winter. You wore white after Easter. No, you could wear white on Easter and you stopped wearing white on Labor Day. How many of you 
put in the chat whether it's okay. Oh, Diversity Love says, thanks. Happy birthday, Mommy. She will probably get to see the um, repeat. She's still in the nursing home doing rehab. And we do talk about it. She knows the days that I go live. She'll be asking somebody today. Happy birthday to you, Mom. Happy birthday. We are actually having a birthday party tomorrow for her at the rehab. And we will have it outside. That was a church rule Yankee sister said about the white. Virtuous Gardener says she'd never heard of it. See, we bird of youth. We had a lot of rules in the old days. You didn't show your arms at church. You usually wore a hat on your head, a big old hat. And uh, the jewelry spot says she can't. I, I feel funny. I do it just because, like, it's like, la, 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 la. This is 19, I mean, 20. 23 i can do whatever i want bad body i've been seeing you doing all your one arm one leg push-ups and stuff you know it's okay but we just didn't i know i know you didn't go to church without a hat no arms out you know knees covered now at church i'll just say some of the clothes they wear to church they probably could and did wear to the to the club, to the club. So um, those of you who are interested in quilt shows, the biggest quilt show in the United States is the Houston International Quilt Show, Rachel. Those of you, uh, Tracy, passionately intrigued arts, if you can get to that one, church dresses were very conservative. <laughs> Mama Gross is rolling laughing. Those those was the days. Those were the rules back then. I remember when I went to school growing up, and Auntie Joanne Stevens will tell you, she's my sister, my biological sister, for those of you you don't know. My mother would make us kneel on the floor before we left to make sure our dress came down to our knees. Down to our knees. So, okay, the, going back to the postcards, the postcards are functional art. And by them being four by six inches, they fit perfectly into frames that you can buy. Some you can buy at the buck and a quarter store. They fit right in. Diversity, so the, yeah, the same Saturday night clothes. Back out, butt out, booty popping, all kinds of stuff. And not just the people attending the church, some of the people on staffs, the trustees, the just stuff, people in the choir, but it is what it is. And you know what? The clothes really shouldn't matter. What's in your heart and how you act, your faith is what matters. And as you guys know, I'm Christian. We talked about that last week when when um, Eco Neighbor dropped in. But I want to tell you that I respect all, all religions. I had, a, I had a couple beautiful Buddhas. And did you know that Buddhas have different hand positions that mean different things? And one of them didn't survive the move when I downsized. I don't know what happened to it. G Mama says had, had her in slips and stocking. Oh, yes. I wore slips. I probably still have a couple slips that you can still get like a Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, whatever. When you wear the long dresses and you walk through the light, you know, going on the red carpet or whatever. So people can see what kind of underwear you have on. If you don't want them to, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So Urban is saying hello to everybody in here. Booty pop. Yankee sister says, oh yeah, like sometimes when the choirs march in, you don't see them do that so much anymore because of the different things going around and the wearing the mask and the spacing, but some of them are partying on the way, on the way up. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, Yankee sister says she still has a few slips. Me too. Bunches of scars in the drawer. I wear scars on my head, around my neck, sometimes around my waist. And just for the record, I will be wearing white 
after Labor Day because I only have one straw hat and some of the people, some of the people that want to go live, like, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? David Corey. I only have one white hat. So when I, I mean, one hat, it's white. When I go up, I will have my white hat on all year. Auntie Bev said she'll go live as a guest to share what I did. She used sharps to fit through the paper in burlap. I I have sharps and I love those. I love those for a lot of things. And like I showed some of you, you can use a thimble for whatever you're using if you're sewing by hand. And you can just put it down on the desktop and push the needle through. So, oh, I have a couple questions. Somebody asked me about how we got my dad's bulldozer out of the mud when we sank it. We had to call a wrecker. And the wrecker, the house in North Carolina had trees on it that were over 200 years old. It had never been cut like for, what do you call it? When they cut all the woods down and regrow it and sell the wood to the different companies that do that. Uh, Yankee sister, a sharp is a type of needle and it's just that it's a, a, a very sharp needle. You probably have some, you probably have some in a case. Okay. Auntie Bev time for her zoom class. See you on the replay. So in that little, the little, um, branch which was like a little runoff river on the property where the runoff from the roads in North Carolina the roads were up high then they had these big ditches on the side if your car went down then one of them you can be sure it was going to roll over it's going to roll over and then ever so many miles there would be a big drainage uh, by the state where the water would run off the road and go back to the back of your property. And even sometimes the Chang gang, they didn't wear black and white, but the prisoners would come and clear the roughage and the weeds along the road and the channels, you know, with their picks and whatnot to make sure that the, there was runoff on the road. So I think I've covered most of the questions. Okay, so now, oh, actually, one more thing that I want to tell you guys, those of you who are quilting, Matthew, you're in here. When you're ironing quilts, you can make a board that fits like a like a one by 12 or cut a piece of plywood and put some little sides on it, cover it with batting and fabric and make a wide ironing board for your crafts. Those of you who do the cricket and things like that, you can make your own or you can turn the ironing board around backwards. So that's my tip of the day, how you usually have the thin part of the ironing board to the front, turn that around and iron with the wide part in the front. And you do that for, you can do that with shirts, like men's shirts, anything big, big. And I will be calling on you, Auntie Bev, in the bushes to come up um, as a guest and share what you did. And we'll do we'll do some together. Anybody else that wants to come up, let me know. And who's making cards? Uh, who is it? Psalm 146 and Bean Juice are making cards. And she did a short video on that. Okay, so there, back where the bulldozer was when it was stuck in the mud, it would, took a while for us to get it out because we had moccasins on the, the property and moccasins swim in the water. They swim in the water and we had copperheads. I accidentally stepped on a copperhead once with flip-flops on. I didn't see it and I had some baby puppies, Connie Corso, Italian Mastiffs. I had a litter of blue puppies and the dog, my dog house was actually a one bedroom mobile home 
that I bought used, took most of the insides out, and they each had their crates at night they came in. They were show dogs. And um, all of my dogs were like for show or for breeding. I would breed them twice and that was it. I'd let them have two litters when they were like two years old and four years old. So it was quite special for them to, to have a litter. I have one book up there. I showed it before where Tufts University Veterinary School picked one of my dogs out of all the county corsos in the United States as the breed standard to show what a county corso should look like according to the breed standard. So that's so much about the moccasins. Let me show you what I finished since last week. So, dun, 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 dun. we, I was, this is an art quilt of the continent of Africa. I will try to get my shoulder up and show you the top and the bottom because each country is cut out of a different African fabric authentic African fabric. Even the background is one called Basel, Basel. And it, it has little flowers. I'm trying to, to show it and hold it up. I have rotator cup issues, but I want to show you that last week I was at the machine doing a zigzag, um, sewing down each country and the borders. And I want to show you what the, hey, Nikki, the everyday life of an OCD-ish chick, the border, each border, each little piece in the border is called a piano key. Why? Because it looks like the, it looks like piano keys. And I took some of the fabrics that are in the continent of Africa. I took a... I took a template that I printed out, went to Staples and blew it up to get it this side. But I went to, I'll show it each side and Madagascar will go on there. But when I start quilting it and go across, I don't want Madagascar to get all raggedy. So Kay Renee says it's beautiful. And it wasn't that hard to do. Some of you want to do a Zoom class, so you can email me if you want to, and we'll figure it out. And I'm just showing you the corners. I put a little blue around the Basil so to, to symbolize the ocean, the ocean. Uh, thank you, Barb Brownlee. I actually belong to a couple of quilt groups and this was one of the projects we did in September. I hadn't finished mine because each one of these piano keys was separately cut, separately sewn. And I wanted to put a little bit extra. This will be one of my, my show quilts. Also, I had in my UFO pile, since I moved here, downsized to this apartment, four years ago, I made a table runner that was double-sided. And this was one side. This was the other size. It's, it has batting in it. And I made, this is like, oh, oh, there goes the bell. I have to knock something over during the live. Also, it's not Auntie Ellen. So you can see, this is one of the decorative stitches built into that little modern machine, one of my few modern machines. And the only reason I have it is because of these little stitches. And that's what I use to go around the edges. And the, I hadn't finished these. I finished one that I have on my tray because I'm naughty and I watch you guys live at night. And hey, Grammy's Journal, how are you doing? Thank you for coming and welcome. And I eat on a tray and watch you guys on a 55-inch TV. 
because my eyes are tired and I don't have to wear my glasses. Sometimes I try to type on my cell phone while you guys are live. Speaking of which, I haven't looked at the chat on there yet. Let me see if I can pull it up and see what you guys are doing. You're usually a little bit naughty in the background and I can't see what you're what you're doing on the chat. I miss things. Okay. So I see 21 of you are watching and I hope I have 21 thumbs up. Thanks everybody. So uh, this naughty never, you guys are cutting up in the background. Sometimes Yankee sister or Maria Graham will call me and said, you didn't see what we were doing in the background. It's like the teacher in the front of the class and the people in the back are passing notes, throwing spitballs, doing everything now on their cell phone. Oh my goodness. Hi at Maria Graham. Yep. You all be cutting up doing stuff. So, and then also as we're getting ready to talk about in a minute, I talk about all quilts should have label. This is not a proper quilt label. We're going to go over in just a minute and I will show you why Mike said he's innocent. He's usually leading the band. He's the drum major marching up and down <laughs> and uh, uh, the drum major at a HBCU at cutting up at that. Hello, everyone now joining this awesome chat. So thank you. Those of you who have the modern machines, like sometimes I mess up on the machine when I'm using those decorative stitches. You like that flowering vine stitch? Thank you, Darth X. That machine has like a hundred built-in stitches, but I just like a couple of them. But I want to show you, uh, my helper went to the store the other day and she saw on my list batteries. The batteries were dead in just about everything in here because I never go through all the aisles all over all the stores to get things. But this is a lighted magnifying glass. And this is what I usually keep one or the other at Pearl's Ma. <laughs> yes, I have pearls. Oh, I want to show you something about pearls. So this one has a really, really bright light. I'm not going to show it um, on the screen because it's really bright. But you might keep one of these because those LED screens are hard to read in certain light. And I find myself thinking I'm putting one number in, like a zigzag stitch on this machine I know is 04. I was doing something and it was another machine, another stitch, and it actually balled all up, caught the in the bob, and I ended up having to take the bottom off, the screws out, do a whole bunch of stuff and clean it which was uncalled for if I had put the correct stitch in. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the machine. I'm looking, reading all the notes I put down. Oh, one more thing about gardening. I have, when I moved in this apartment, I have a windowsill and I had four small plants on it. It's behind a leather sofa and drapes and whatnot. It's like the only big window I have in this, you know, open room. And when I went to my mom's house, there was an aloe vera baby that fell out the bed about this big on the floor. And I said, oh, I'm not going to let you die. So I brought it home and I put it in a little tiny pot and it grew. And it grew and I kept up potting it and it got too big. The plants I have in my window, two are snake plants. It was one snake plant when I moved in here. The maintenance man gave it to me because somebody moved out and didn't take it. He didn't want to put it in the trash. So I adopted it, put it in three different pots. I put a dumb cane in it. So I have one in my bathroom. My bathroom, I live in a handicapped apartment. So a certified handicap apartment. So my doors are wider than most doors. If I had a riding, um, not lawnmower, 
a writing wheelchair, I could ride around, go into the bedroom, go into the bathroom, turn around, go to the sink. I had them put a regular sink in and appliances because I don't need all of that. I don't need all that stuff. But some of them, some of the bennies are good to have in this in this special building. And in the bathroom is a, is a big light for some reason and it has three bulbs in it. So I have a a plant sitting right under it it's huge it's going to probably i don't know how tall a snake plant can grow and those are one of the best ones for you to have for oxygen and whatnot but the snake plant in the far corner not only does it have all these rhizomes it's expanded to the circumference of the plant it has grown to the top of the windowsill and the poor thing as hands in the dirt would say, babies in the bed all crowded, too small, him and Nikki, and it's starting to bend over. One of the neighbors who actually owns a farm said, oh, the maintenance man told me, hey, I bring it every day, Kelly. The maintenance man, I asked him, whose plant is that in the window? Because my window is overgrown with plants. It's like, even if you don't call those the blinds at night, you can't see through it because I have a mother-in-law's tongue. I have a spider plant that I took 50, 50 babies off. Sheila Newman, thank you. She's new. She just started following. I appreciate you, and thank you for coming. So we are going to go now to why are labels important on a quilt? A quilt, most of us have a quilt. It belonged to a grandmother. It belonged to somebody. One of the places you can find a lot of good quilts are at the thrift stop, thrift store. One of the antique sewing machines that we have in the family, in the family, I won't say arsenal, they might get blocked, in the family collection, Auntie Joanne Stevens, we were talking about my OCD-ishness, and I actually found that machine in North Carolina near Lake Gaston Estates. Uh, who is it? Um, I hate to say, um, but one of the, the oh, Ann Dale Homestead, her aunt and family live near Lake Gaston. That's one of the quilt groups I belong to, but there's a Habitat Restore near there, and some of those estates, when they downsize, they give their stuff to this Habitat for Humanity. I bought this featherweight machine that Auntie Joanne has there, So, and what was really interesting, it didn't have a regular case. You know what? The It was used for a case because it weighed 11.4 pounds. Hello, Miss Shirley. OG, thank you for coming. It was a case for a bowling ball, for a bowling ball, and it was rolling. And so Auntie Joanne, just last night, we were talking about it. And she, I said, knowing me, because when I, I have a sewing machine, whether it's in a case, whatever I have it in, I put the date I bought it what the machine's name is. She'll have to put the name of hers because I, oh, she told me I put the name was Carolina. Why? Because she was born in Carolina, Miss Carolina. So Auntie Joanne found a three by five card with the name of the machine, the serial number on it. For the, I don't know about other machines. Most of mine are Singer, Vintage Singer, and not only did it have the serial number, it had the name on it and all that on the card inside the case. So those of you who have machines, you might want to do that. I know we're going to live forever, but one day we might do something with the machine. And it's part of the history. Just as that labeling is part of the history of your machine, a label is the birth certificate of a quilt. I repeat that a label is the birth certificate for a quilt on a quilt. We're going to go over there and make one. 
there are certain things you put on a quilt and even if you bought a quilt at the thrift store put a label on it put a label uh if you have a name for it put thank you i'm working on getting a sewing machine i should have paid attention when my mom was living to learn how to sew she was really good no worries sheila newman there are people on here there are people in the chat for one maria graham sews a lot and she's an excellent sewer uh barb brownlee has five machines i bring it every day bought her treadle at a restore i i accidentally had 35 machines before i downsized if anybody's interested in seeing what my studio looked like i now live in an 800 square foot apartment but just the studio on my property was 1500 square feet i had 35 sewing machines including a long arm embroidery machines high speed bobbin winders all all the toys now i downsized and i only kept a few of my favorite things i was down to four machines one of which is my grandmother's industrial machine i i bought a camera so that i can put it in the corner over there it's a regular industrial machine that has never been used never been used you can sew on the sewing machine it isn't that difficult darth x says he can sew on a sewing machine so we'll do some um, beginning projects who did i say maria graham said she's going to do some beginning sewing straight sewing yeah mike i accidentally bought 35 machines because i love the antiques or i would be going to a yard sale or something or see them the most of the machines i have now were inherited uh, bessie the one i use every day the little featherweight came from a family member where good friends become family and family is everything it was one of my aunties and she was selling it and she sold it to me i think in like 1997 1999 for uh, what I thought was a reasonable amount because she owned a dress shop. One of the f first, it wasn't a dress shop. It was a hat shop. And she was one of the first black people in Connecticut that owned a hat shop. Okay. So the birth certificate for a quilt is called a label. And we are going to go over and I will show you how to make an actual label because I can tell you and it seems like I, I was explaining to Auntie Joanne last night I was talking about it but just seeing it reinforces it so let's go over there you can do it you can do it Sheila Newman we hope to see you back and I will be doing so I do some sewing at the machine today we're going to work on labels making sure I didn't put any any um, cleaning solution on this tissue. My eyes water from the bright lights. And I, I have glaucoma. I know Miss Shirley OG has a problem with uh, the light as, as well. So I can't even do the ring lights. I have a special lens in one eye. And it's like a ring light inside my eye. And then the ring light just lights it up. I look like one of the computer characters in one of those games, one of those electronic games. Okay, so I have my little ice cushion back there The Ty Lily gave me. I had it on my neck. I want to encourage you guys to do what you love and love what you do. Hi, Erica Taylor. So I will be standing up because for me, I don't know about you guys, my computer is heavy i'm walking slowly so that i don't trip over anything and because this is a she a, a work place over here okay it's bright lights are no joke i know and then as soon as you turn on your computer it says oh to bright lights will make you everything look amazing I look at it and it looks like I see craters in my face, whatever, whatever. I clean it before I go live. 
I want you to see. So we are going to make a label. Any of you that have a notebook, get your notebook or something to write on because I'm going to give you some information that will be good for the rest of your life. And that is how to make a, a label. There's certain information you put on a label. Me, I show a lot of my quilts and I put them in different quilt shows. I put them on exhibit in different things. Sheila, um, Maria Graham is recommending looking at some YouTubes. There are some YouTube channels that start in the beginning. I bring it every day. I bring it every day. Does a lot of crochet, but she does a lot of things. She cooks, virtuous gardening, and more. I know that she's into arts and crafts. And there are a lot of crafters. They Most people include sewing as crafting. But when you elevate it and, and bring it up to the best you can, it's actually an art. These fabric postcards, as you saw, Auntie Bev's are, are an art. Trying to bring this so that I can, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll open this and I will show you some of the things you put on a quilt label. You also can make a quilt journal. Those of you, if you email me and you would like a quilt register or an art register, if you email me at, let me put this banner on again. If you email me at ellenpanky at gmail.com, I actually have a Word document, a template that you can put in your computer and you put all the information about the quilt in a like it's it's almost like an excel sheet but it's in word and you can just type in what your your information what but the thing about that is with all the different hacks the different whether it's your photographs whatever have a backup and the reason is that you might even not you might not even have this format by the time you're my age when i i worked this is storytelling time. I worked at IBM in the 1980s and I worked on the Department of Defense. I worked on what's now GPS. I never knew that GPS would be something in your phone, your car that tells you how to get from point A to point B, but it was something I worked on back then. And I got the first class of laptops. Well, back then in the 1980s, I paid $5,000. Hello, Rika T. Thank you for coming and welcome. Oh, Rika T, I think is Erica Taylor's nickname. And this this machine was $5,000. Plus each, each app, I think they call them apps now, was on a certain bunch of disks. They had floppy disks then. There's no floppy disks now. Suppose your data. That data that I had on floppy disk is obsolete. They don't have that anymore. Then they, up, oh, and then you had to put all these little discs, all these little discs in. I, I, I have an old computer in here now that has a drive with the 3.5 inch hard discs because it still has a bunch of photos on it that I want to update. And it has some other stuff that I want to be able to access. I don't know how many of you had cassettes in your car, the cassette players. I remember when there was an eight track in one of my first cars. Oh boy, that thing was so cool. Then the eight tracks were superseded by the cassettes. Well, I have, I don't know if you can see it. I have, you can't see it, but the back of, of something over there Hey, Tracy, passionately intrigued, or speaking to Grammy's journal. Inside the card files, I have an antique oak card file that I bought from a library. It has the bottom part, and then it has one, 
two, three or four stacks above it and a top. I keep different things in it, tools, other things. But I also keep those cassettes in it. That was back in the day when they had that good, good music. Oh, my goodness. And my, my second husband, yes, there was more than one happy soul in my life. And he made tapes. Oh, the best music mix. My brother, my brothers had huge music collections. Auntie J. Auntie J still has the big, the big discs, the big records. Sissy so put, oh, the 33s. Auntie Joanne still has some of those and the big ones. And Auntie Joanne even has one of those Victrolas. By the way, she also has one of my an antique treadle machine that someone gave her. It belonged to their mother. So there are about five sewing machines at Auntie Joanne's house. Some of hers, some of the ones I dragged there, some of the ones I caused to be dragged there. So I guess everybody had a chance to go get something to write on and quilting is next. You just enjoy hanging out. Okay. Well, not bragging, but I, I am a master quilter. And I come on here because I want to share that art with those who didn't have a chance to learn it. And most of the people who are my level of quilting don't come on uh, YouTube. They're, they charge for their classes. I do too, but I come on YouTube for free and I'm more than happy to go back. So these are some of the things that you want to put on a quilt label. Number one is the name of the quilt. If you have a name of the quilt, we're getting ready to do a label live. Uh, like the one I just did, because it kind of looks like a heart from afar. The name of that quilt will be Heart of Africa. So that will be across the top of the label. For me, because I show most of my quilts at some time, not all the time, and I do trunk shows. When you show your quilts, you have to know the amount of space it's going to take. You are given an amount of wall space, whatever, in a quilt show. I have my own quilt stands and other things, but you need to know what size it is so that you don't have to measure it every time you take it out. Or even if you have your own stash of quilts, does this go for a twin size bed? Is it a throw, a king size bed? You know, these quilts have a little weight on them. Your arms get tired taking them out, unfolding them, uh, doing them, you know, taking care of them. So it's nice to be able to look in a corner and see what size quilt you're dealing with. Then you put made by. For me on that place, I put artist Ellen Panky. Why? Because I am a mixed media certified mixed media artist. I even accidentally got a certificate in graphic arts so that I can do things on the computer. My computer, I actually have a MacBook. For those of you who play games, uh, this, this MacBook has 32 megabytes of RAM, random access memory. I can process a lot of things at one time. Do I use it all? No, no. But when I was taking the graphic art certificate class, I needed to run different different programs that took up a lot of processing memory. Passionately intrigued arts is growing up. Her parents owned a record shop. She was young enough to remember albums and singles. Okay, that is great to know. I bet you still wish you had those. And they're going back to vinyl. But anyway, this is going back to, you don't know what the next genre of digital storage will be. So it would help to have your own little, you can make your own journal. You can have one online, but back it up on your computer because then you can print it out in whatever format it is. If you still remember how to use the computer at my age, my mom is up there and she was one of the first ones to get an iPhone. 
and she's so funny. The funny thing she said was, I can't, I can't talk to my friends. Uh, she couldn't FaceTime her friends. So everybody else in the family ended up getting uh, eye crack, <laughs> some type of eye stuff. So I, Apple, that means Apple, so that we could have family chats and mommy could see our faces. P passionately intrigued arts that she still has 33s and 45s. I did, but when I downsized, those were sold, uh, the house was sold as is because there was too much stuff. So for review, you put the name of the quilt over there, the size of the quilt, who made it, and the city and state. Why? Because it helps you track down. Sometimes there are libraries that want to chronicle the quilts that were made in that state. A lot of libraries do that. Somebody recently put down that their aunt's quilts were in the Library of Congress. This is what you call the provenance, the provenance, the story of the quilt and where it came from. So your city and state helps and the date that you finished it. Yankee's sister will be right back. She has some music. She's probably putting it on in the background. So now let's make a quilt label. So take a screenshot of what to put on a quilt label. And if you do other types of arts, it could be a fabric postcard. I make my fabric postcards in the shape of a mini quilt in the format of a mini quilt. As Mike's Chaotic Gardening said when he received his, I put a layer of batting in because that makes it a quilt and can be entered in any quilt show. Are the fabric postcards that I'm making now, are they show quality? No, but it is still a mini quilt and you can still put them in a four by six frame. And so that's what goes on the quilt label and you, on your quilt register, you can add additional details. For example, you can put down shirt contains, we're going to do a label for the quilt that was hanging in my background a couple of weeks ago. And it was a my grandfather's quilt that had a piece of his shirt. My grandfather, Grandpa Charlie, was born in 1899. So guess what? I'm going to name this quilt. The Grandpa Charlie quilt. Because my mother has a king size quilt with this. I donated a smaller quilt with pieces of his shirt. My mother had one shirt when Grandpa Charlie died, and I took it and fussy cut each of the blocks in the flannel shirt, the shirt and the back and the sleeves, and I made different things for memory and legacy. Mike's Keanu Gardner says, the state fairs are right now. You win with my card. Not that one, Mike, but maybe the next one. And you can. You never know. You never know because it was handmade and it was, it, and it's, it's art and it's called functional art. So in your quilt register, you have more room. Obviously a, a label, a quilt label will not have that much room and you can buy pre-made labels. Here is a copy of a pre-made label. I think Rachel Unbiased LLC, somebody sent her one. These you can buy at quilt shows, different quilt shops. They come in a big, a big like a yard by whatever the width of the fabric is, and you individually cut them out. This one, and on all my labels, when I cut them out, I iron. This is a piece of freezer paper. The reason the freezer paper is on there is to keep the ink from saturating and spreading too far when I write on it. So you will try to buy a pen that is resistant to washing, washing and fading. Actually, actually, oh, my pants aren't showing for people who who like to look at things. This is a 
part of an extension table, but what I'm going to do is try to put this up higher so that you guys can see it. Well, before I do, I don't know if you see, um, these modern machines are not heavy enough to be stable. I used to have rug, rug padding underneath here, but what this lovely thing is, is a table mat a beautiful table mat in Native American colors. And it was a gift sent to me by Maria Graham, who loves to sew. So I'm going to use, yeah, that makes that better. This table, we'll see, or not. Or not. To make a label. So going back to the Grandpa Charlie quilt, this is a pre-made label that I'm going to use right now to make a label. And I want to show you some other labels that I will be making, maybe not live, but I'll do a video on it. This is part of a, another pre-made label that I will be using on... A different quilt. So we're going to work on the Grandpa Charlie quilt. This is what a piece of unbleached muslin looks like. I, this is the same type of unbleached muslin that I use to cut four by six for the postcards. However, this is not postcard size. I just cut these. What size did I make these for a label? Because I try to put a lot of information on my on my show quilts and on my quilts that I'm keeping for myself so that I remember the information. So this this square is like five and a half by five and a half. I was probably making some blocks because I make a lot of blocks that are five inches. So this is unbleached muslin that you can do this on. This is a template that I made years ago, years ago, and I would take it and put it up to my light box or the window. You guys can take a screenshot because if you want to make your own, you take your unbleached muslin and add the freezer paper to the back. I liked it without, most of the time, without without this bow then some some labels i made with just the bow on it and i put the information i'll show you in a second this is another label that i made it was hand made and i would take my markers my fabric markers and draw my own draw my own labels on there and when i make quilts that i'm showing and whatnot and you'll see this actually fits the exact size, almost, except turning it in. So you can see through it where you can actually trace it. So even if you had your, your freezer paper ironed onto the back of it, you could still put it up to the window and trace it. Still put it up to the window and trace it. So you see how you can make your own. I actually like making my own. But lately, I've been kind of lazy. i got so many things going. So I will put these over, over here. That being said, some of you, exciting to see how I do this on the machine. No, these are not done on the machine, uh, Yankee Scissor. These labels are hand are are made by hand these are made by hand although now that you said that i will show you something else you can print some out just a minute i will show you some of my other projects because you can buy you can buy fabric that is already 
ready to be used in an inkjet printer. My, notice I said inkjet printer, not a laser printer. And it looks like this. This is inkjet art paper. And what it is, it is fabric. It, listen to me. It's fabric that you can put through a printer like a regular piece of paper. It's eight and a half by 11. And this is another project that I was working on. I have so many things going. Um, one is an original Underground Railroad quilt code where I made my own blocks and I made two Underground Railroad code quilts that I'm trying to get ready for Black History Month next year. For those of you who don't know that I am a speaker for Black History Month and a researcher. Uh, 20 years ago, I did the research for City College of New York, their Underground Railroad website. So I have a lot of information in my head and written to talk about Black history and specifically the Underground Railroad. So speaking of cloth and printing on them, you can also take a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch unbleached muslin again and iron freezer paper on the back and put it in the computer. I wait until Joanne's has the, or Michael's, whoever has a, a, a sale, like there are Labor Day sales now, and I buy packs of that fabric that goes through the printer. So why am I showing you this? This is actually a, an original photo that I took, Ellen Pankey, I think, oh, it was in 2004, and it was of the ship La Amistad, where there was a mutiny uh, years ago, but the ship was recommissioned, rebuilt here in Connecticut. There's a little dinghy behind it. And I took a photo of it as it came into New Haven Harbor, like almost 20 years ago. But why am I showing you this? Because it's part of my exhibit with the Underground Railroad, because that ship was an historic part of it. But I want to show, no, that's actually, let me go back to it. Actually, this is, this will be part of my Underground Railroad exhibit. And this is the same photo printed on fabric in my, in my inkjet printer. What I do though, I put parchment paper over it and I heat set it so that it doesn't, it doesn't fade. Okay. So. And I put a little piece of paper in, in between it. So now I'm also going to make a label. And you know, the quilt of Africa that I just showed you, that one I made that made with different fabrics. And each fabric was in a different of a different country. But I want to show you. I printed it out and I will frame this. And when I show my quilt, this is, this will be next to it. The quilt that I just showed you when I was sitting down and it's the actual map. Some of you asked me to email you a copy of it. This is the original map, eight and a half by 11. I printed it on my home computer here. And it has all of the countries because some of the countries are so tiny, so tiny, like over here in West Africa, that they actually had to be printed out in the ocean because you couldn't write the word. You couldn't write the word on the map. So I'm actually, this is a piece of fabric that I printed on the computer. I'm going to put a little piece of fabric around and quilt it so that I can show it along with the quilt. So this goes to Yankee Sister's question about printing them. You can draw something up. You can use Procreate in your iPad. You can draw something 
And yes, you can, C-A-N, you can actually print them. I'm not doing that today. I'm showing you how to do it by hand. So now we have this piece. And I'm going to make it so that you can see me make the label. Now, I have several pens over here. I'm going to experiment with a new one today because I bought some, some laundry markers. We know laundry markers are supposed to be water resistant. And I'm going to try to make the label out of this laundry marker. So we'll see if it's a pass or not. And I bought this on Amazon and it says, rub-a-dub-dub -dub laundry marker. So this should be pretty water resistant, pretty water resistant. So this is, and I make a little note, in addition to my journal, I haven't caught up my, my um, quote register online with all my information, but this is what I wrote down to make the label for my grandpa Charlie quilt. It's, um, and his name was Wenner, W-H-E-N-E-R-D, C. Thomas. Why do I say that? Because my family, my maternal family, well, both families, the Panky and the Thomas family, have family cemeteries. And the Panky family cemetery is in North Carolina in back of a church that my grandfather and great-grandfather helped to build. The Thomas family cemetery is not too far from Steeler Nation and it's in Pennsylvania. It's the, the Thomas family cemetery and it is a 501c3. I miss said that last week when we were talking about it. I, I didn't mean to say LLC. It is a registered 501c3, which means it's a nonprofit and it's been researched by the state of Pennsylvania. Every grave in there is validated as who is in that grave when they went there. My grandfather was a set of twins. And my great-great-grandfather owned a walk-in coal mine in 400 acres of land there. And he donated the land for this family cemetery. So this will be the Grandpa Charlie quilt. And on this card I put, it contains pieces of his gray flannel shirt and has other vintage fabrics. And I finished it on February 20th, 22 on his birthday. And I did it in Norwalk, Connecticut. So this will be part of the documentation for like Quilts of Connecticut. I haven't entered it in anything. So without further ado, I'm going to put this information on this label and this label will then be put on the quilt so we're going to see if this laundry marker works it looks pretty thin on the tip so we'll see and i'm going to try to write straight by putting something under the bottom and I'm trying to do it so that you guys can see it. And if it doesn't work, guess what? I'll get another label. Um, grand. I think it's working, you guys. Pap. Charlie. Quilt. So I'm writing on the tree, but that's okay. And it's not exactly straight because I can't see straight, especially when I'm writing crooked. And the size, it is 45 inches wide by 64 inches long. Mm. Why did I make it that size? Because I'm keeping it for me and I am 60, am I, how am I, five, 
five three and a half. I for I I, I shrunk. I'm five three and a half. So that will be sixty three and a half inches. So this quilt will cover me up. All right. So now it's 45 inches by 64 inches and finish. No, no, no. What am I going to put? Oh, by, by granddaughter. That would be me. You can put whatever you want on here. So instead of all. Well, Author, I'm putting by granddaughter Ellen Pankey. And I'm going to put February 20th, 2022, Norwalk. And if you guys buy these pre-printed labels, you can write over the lines. You'll see I did. It's not exactly straight, but it's my quote, my label, and I will let it dry. So this is the Grandpap Charlie quilt, 45 inches wide by 64 inches long, by granddaughter Ellen Pankey. Then now what you do is, you know, the freezer paper that I put on here? I'm pulling it off. Why? Because I can use it for something else. And I'm going to let this dry. I normally let it dry on the freezer paper just so that it goes through. Then I fold the edges under a quarter of an inch. And I hand sew it onto the back of a quilt. Okay. So one more thing to show you. This is actually two things. This is the Grandpa Charlie quilt. This is the front of it. I'm not going to take it all out. This is why you put the labels, the measurements on it so you don't have to. Oh, and for those of you who quilt, this is a this is a mitered corner. I sewed the sewed it onto the quilt with a sewing machine. Then I hand sewed it at the end so that the stitches are invisible. And this is what a perfectly mitered corner looks like. Ta-da! I will do that live when somebody wants to see how to actually put a mitered corner on a quilt. And for those of you who are new, some of you let me show you the parts of the quilt and it wasn't a lot for those of you who've lost loved ones i see people making bears and other things these okay this square is one that i fussy cut out of grandpa charlie's quilt and added all the stuff around it And here's another double block. That's all I had of his. And I bought all this fabric on the front and the back to make it look vintage. To make it look vintage. I did send it to a long arm quilter to finish the back of it. Why? Because I don't have my long arm machine anymore. And I have 60 completed quilt tops that I need to finish and sell. And get them out of here. And this is how it's quilted in the back. Just to show you. And I made it scrappy. I just want to show you all the different fabrics I sewed together. Did I have to? No. I could have used wide backing. But that was my attempt to do it like they did in the old days. When they didn't have a lot of fabric. Now, the last thing I want to show you. And some of you are new. I'll just show you Miss Mignon again. You notice she doesn't have the pin in her hat anymore because this is an art quilt. And that's because I was showing it to one of my friends who came to my apartment. And guess what? The pin fell out. I don't want that to happen at a show or something. 
and the pin was a special pin given to me by one of my aunts when I was a little girl. It was a little butterfly with fake diamonds in it, rhinestone. So I'm going to take a cowrie shell, which is like what she has on her ears and her neck, and sew it on here. But what I'm going to show you on the back is this art quilt because it's small and we're still talking about the issue of labels. You make it whatever you want to be. And this is the label. The name of this quilt is Miss Mignon because it's a small quilt and I didn't have that much room by Ellen Pankey, 22 inches wide by 25 inches long. And I finished it the 19th of June, 2023. You notice I don't have the city on it and state, but I will put it in my register in the provenance so that when I show it, I will have it. Thank you guys. And I appreciate you staying until the end. And my sister protect the pin. Yes. So um, thank you for coming. Do what you love and love what you do. Uh, uh, miss, not miss. Uh, yes, Miss Shirley, the OG gardener, will be going live tonight. I believe, I believe, Odom's or one of one of those. I can't remember the name. They will be going live at nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, I forget what they call the different shows, and I think the Educated Natural is going live tonight. I'm probably saying the name's wrong because I get I get brain dead at the end. I appreciate each and every one of you. For those of you making fabric postcards, don't forget to put hashtag fabric postcards 2023. Uh, thank you, Renee's Garden. Do what you love, love what you do. Garden, quilt, and art traditions. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share it out if you like what we're doing. I, I love you. I love you, Mom. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great evening. Love you guys.